Hi everyone, it is so good to see you. Welcome to Crime 2 News at noon. I'm Laura Papetti and we begin with this. Our top story coming in at noon, the Mead School Board passed a resolution last night barring transgender female athletes from competing in girls sports. Even though it was passed, the resolution doesn't really change any of Mead's participation policies. The Washington Interscholastic Activities Association, also known as the WIAA, still allows students to play for the team quote, that is consistent with their gender identity. The resolution adds me to a list of school districts trying to amend WIAA rules surrounding gendered sports participation. Now, the resolution goes on to say, quote, the Mead School District does not support biological male athletes participating in biological female competition categories. So for more information, just head to our website. We have it posted there. That is on creme.com. This is also new coming in at noon. The Pullman Police Department is looking for the public's help identifying suspects in an assault. Just after 1 a.m. on Sunday, police say they responded to an assault along the 900 block of Northeast Colorado Street. They say two men witnessed a group of people fighting and tried to intervene. Police say they were then attacked by a group of college-age men. One victim was knocked unconscious. Police say if you have the identity of anyone in the group, please to give them a call right away. Happening tonight, Spokane City Council is hosting its third community roundtable focusing on homelessness solutions. And tonight's meeting will focus on finding shelter locations and the criteria for activating emergency sheltering. This comes after Spokane Mayor Lisa Brown released her winter shelter plan, which many had, which had some community members asking questions. No registration is required to attend the event tonight, and it does begin at 530 at the Central Library. All right, 12.02 right now. We're going to head on over to our friend Thomas Patrick. He's standing by in the Weather Center. Thomas, what do you know? Yeah, good afternoon, Laura. For today, it is a bit cooler than it has been recently. The sunshine feels great out there as of this noon hour. So if you're in the direct sunlight, not too bad. But the shade is obviously a different story. And by the way, temperatures are officially recorded in the shade. So 48 degrees in the shade is definitely still going to feel a little cold. But the sunshine can definitely make a big difference in which there is actually a decent amount of outside for today. Looks like we'll end up mostly sunny for this afternoon. And I think our high temperatures will be in the mid 50s today. So most of this cloud cover stays to the south because there is a stationary front, meaning that it is, well, stationary non-moving over Oregon and southern Idaho today. That's where the cloud cover is going to stay. Our weather is being dominated by that high pressure to the north. So things will stay a little bit cooler because we are on the cool side of that frontal boundary, but it will make a more impactful difference tonight and early tomorrow morning as low temperatures will drop down into the 30s and 20s for most of the inland northwest. So a frosty morning ahead and far from the only day with temperatures this cool. Coming up, we'll show you the extended forecast that will show you how many days will be at or below freezing in Spokane. Plus the weekend forecast is all coming up in a few minutes. They were always over my house, you know, we were next door so the kids would come over and, and 4th of July and play sparklers and everything. And the little girl just recently painted me a picture. A community is mourning after five people, including three children, were killed in western Washington. A teenager is expected to appear in court today or tomorrow to face first or second degree murder charges in those deaths. According to the King County Sheriff's Office, it happened just before 5 a.m. yesterday morning near Fall City. Multiple people called 911, telling authorities that they heard gunshots. When deputies arrived, they found two adults and three children dead. They say another teen was hurt but was taken to Harborview. A seventh person, a teenager, was taken into custody. The King County Sheriff's Office says it could take several days to investigate and will certainly bring you all the latest updates on this story. We'll have it posted on crim.com. And with election day just two weeks away, polls are showing an extremely close presidential race. As Natalie Brand reports from Washington, D.C., both campaigns are making a very big push for every last vote. Former President Donald Trump held a town hall with Latino voters in Florida Tuesday, his second in two weeks, as he tries to chip away support from Vice President Kamala Harris. We're doing very well. 
Uh, the polls are looking great. Later, he returns to North Carolina, where yesterday he made the baseless claim that Harris plans to persecute various religious groups if elected. They label Catholics as potential domestic terrorists, and the fact is that uh, They'll be coming after you soon. And North Carolina hasn't chosen a Democratic president since 2008, but Trump isn't taking chances. On Monday, he stopped in two counties that went for President Biden in 2020 as he tries to pick up votes. Vice President Kamala Harris also continues outreach beyond her base. She campaigned in three battleground states Monday with former GOP Congresswoman Liz Cheney in an appeal to disaffected Republicans and independents. You cannot trust him. We've seen the man that he is. We've seen the cruelty. And America deserves much better. Harris is off the campaign trail today, focusing on a couple of interviews. But her running mate, Minnesota Governor Tim Walz, rallies this afternoon with former President Barack Obama in Wisconsin as early voting gets underway in that battleground state. Natalie Brand, CBS News, Washington. Also this year, Spokane voters will be casting their vote on who will represent Washington's 5th District in Congress to fill Kathy McMorris Rogers' seat. The candidates are Michael Bumgardner and Carmela Conroy. We want, you to help, we want to help you learn more about the candidates, so our Amanda Rowley asked each of them to spill the tea on who they are and where they stand on important issues. Tonight, we'll be hearing from Michael Bumgardner. Not just for our kids, but for everyone's children. We're just very concerned about the future of our country. So, Michael, what is the number one thing you would want to address as a congressman? Well, I think the topic is we'll have his answer to that question and so much more on The Tea with Amanda Rowley tonight. That's coming up at 6 o'clock. And we hope you will join us as CRIM 2 is hosting a 5th District Congressional Debate. The candidates, Carmela Conroy and Michael Bumgardner, will be right here in the Creme 2 studio. That's coming up soon, Wednesday, October 30th. The hour-long debate begins at 7, and we'll have it that night on all our stations. Creme 2, KSKN 22, Creme 2 Plus, and Creme.com. And in fact, we are streaming live on Creme 2 Plus right now. So hi to everyone who is on Creme 2 Plus. We have the latest updates on the news impacting your community. Creme 2 Plus is free to download. So again, let me reiterate, free to download on Roku, Amazon Fire, and Apple TV. Great way to get your news.